One of the enduring axioms in bodybuilding is that you should not eat past a certain time. Often this is said to be about 8 p.m. This is uh, similar to other uh, typical advice, advice given to uh, bodybuilders such as don't eat egg whites and uh, do, uh, fa do cardio on well fasted, in other words, not eating anything. Uh, the problem with this is that this has been passed down from bodybuilder to bodybuilder. And when you look at the science behind some of these things, you find that it really doesn't exist. It's It can only be categorized as what they call bro science. It's more in the minds of the people that do it. Uh, but when it comes to late night eating, it's a little trickier because there's uh, research to show that it's, it may be bad or, and it might be good. Whether it is or not depends on circumstances, which I'll, I'll discuss in this video. Um, now, the, the, the idea about, uh, about that you shouldn't eat late at night is based on studies uh, or based on the notion that the body handles ingested calories differently in the evening because you're usually not active at that time and there's a greater chance for the ingested evening calories to be converted into body fat or to blunt body fat losses. The suggestion is that your resting metabolism is slower at night because, you know, usually people at night are, what, whatever, they're just sitting around, you know, they're not really being active, so you're, you're burning less calories. So if you eat late, the calories have no way to go but be stored as fat. The problem with that is that your resting metabolism is the same at night as it is in the uh, daytime. You have to understand at night, even when you're sleeping, there's a lot of things going on in the body. For example, uh, if you're below 40, there's the uh, release of growth hormone. There's uh, all kinds of things. There's, there's muscle protein synthesis. There are things going on in the brain. Uh, all of this requires a certain level of metabolism. So even though you don't seem to be so doing anything, your metabolism is staying at a, a fairly even keel all the time. There's no such thing as a drop in resting metabolism at night. But, you know, the eating late, late at night is a confusing subject in nutrition, as I said, because there's evidence to show that late night eating can be detrimental and other evidence showing that it makes no difference at all. Uh, a, a couple of studies have shown that eating late at night can blunt fat losses. This is where the confusion uh, arises. The reason for this is that eating later means you are taking in more calories, and it's the added calories that produce the fat loss inhibition effect. In other words, it's not the time, the time you're eating, it's the fact that you're just eating more, taking in more calories than you expend. Uh, uh, in addition, many people are hungrier at night and often eat higher calorie foods at the time. I know that's true for myself. I tend to get very hungry at night uh, uh, for some reason, and uh, I've always been this way. But I've used a, little, a couple of little tricks that I'll talk about. One of them is to have a, a little bit of nuts, like peanuts or walnuts or something like that. Uh, the, the nuts are high in fat, and yes, they're high in calories, but recent studies suggest that the nuts more or less are not as digestible as used to be thought, and they pass right through you, but they tend to kind of induce the satiety effect where it lowers your appetite so you don't eat junkier foods like refined carbohydrates and refined fats and that kind of stuff. That's just one trick. Others like to consume snacks while watching TV. You know, you're watching the show, you absentmindedly might grab a bag of chips or something like that, and you're stuffing your face. I mean, if you ever look at the calorie content of these things, some of these uh, uh, chips and snacks, you look at the calorie content. If you eat a whole bag, you can be taking in over a thousand calories. That's quite a bit of calories. It's almost like eating ice cream. Uh, if you overly restrict calories during the day, for example, let's say you're on a starvation diet or you're not getting enough calories or something like that. Uh, if, you don't eat, if you don't eat at regular intervals, if you wait too long between meals, your hunger is going to gradually increase. So at night, you're going to be ravenously hungry and there's going to be a greater tendency to eat at night. And if you're able to keep the calories restricted, that wouldn't be too bad. But if you wait too long, again, if you if you you know go hungry during the day and don't eat, uh, don't space your meals properly. At night, you're going to be so hungry, you're going to wind up overeating, ingesting too many calories. So that will blunt fat loss, and it will possibly even increase body fat gains. Uh, now, now also, if you eat late at night, 
you tend to do things like skip uh, breakfast. If you eat a lot of food at night, skipping breakfast, unfortunately, sets into uh, starts a kind of a cycle where you wind up eating more as the hours go by, and by the time the night comes, you eat even more, and again, you wind up taking in more calories. On the other hand, other studies show that having a small, low-calorie, lower-carb snack at night can curb hunger enough to prevent excess ingestion of calories. In one four-week study of adults who were late, who were na night snackers, participants who, uh, who began eating a, a bowl of cereal and milk 90 minutes after dinner ate an average of 397 fewer calories per day, and they actually lost weight because of that. Eating at night may help people sleep better. This is one of the advantages of eating at night. It can help people sleep better, especially if you consume carbohydrates, because carbohydrates promote the entry of the amino acid tryptophan into the brain. Tryptophan is then converted by an enzyme into serotonin, which is a brain neurotransmitter that's uh, involved in the induction of sleep and relaxation. In other words, it helps you sleep. Uh, I, I should warn, though, that uh, you got to be careful about protein, especially if you eat protein alone without any carbs, because protein can cause insomnia because of certain amino acids, such as tyrosine and phenylalanine. Uh, these are the precursors of a uh, a substance called catecholamines like dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, uh, and it's great to have this during the day. It's great for fat burning, but during the night, these are brain stimulants that can keep you awake, give you insomnia. Not everybody have, uh, is affected by protein. I've spoken to many people who have a protein drink right before they go to sleep. doesn't affect their sleep at all. Others will have a protein drink and get severe insomnia where they have to take something just to fall asleep. And remember, not getting enough sleep itself can cause weight gain because of an imbalance between a appetite-stimulating uh, hormone called ghrelin and a, another uh, 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 protein called leptin. Leptin, uh, which is produced by fat cells, acts to reduce the appetite. And when you don't, when you get less than se seven hours sleep, you change the uh, the balance between ghrelin and leptin in favor of ghrelin. And the ghrelin is the most appetite-stimulating protein in the body. Uh, ghrelin is uh, produced in the gut. Uh, when you eat a meal, ghrelin production stops instantaneously because the, the brain senses that you're taking in calories. And as soon as you stop eating, uh, hour by hour, the ghrelin concentrations increase. So after about, you know, let's say three, four hours, the sensation of hunger returns. It's caused by ghrelin. See? So ghrelin stimulates appetite. Leptin inhibits it. And when you don't get enough sleep, you get too much ghrelin. And you wind up overeating, taking in too many calories. You want to avoid eating highly processed or refined carbohydrates prior to sleep. And, uh, you, can you want to increase protein and fat. Uh, like I say, you got to be careful of the protein. Some people are sensitive. If you're not... Uh, you know, if you take it with the fat, it tends to kind of blunt the stimulating effects of the uh, protein. So protein and fat snack before sleep will is, is actually not bad and it will curtail the, uh, the uh, ingestion of excess calories. Some studies suggest that the body is geared towards consuming calories only at certain hours. In other words, within a, it has to do with what they call circadian rhythm, where your body, you know, certain hormones are secreted at certain times, and the body is more suited to accepting calories at certain times where the calories are used as energy rather than being stored as fat. A mouse study showed that if the mice consumed all their daily calories during the day, now remember, mice are nocturnal. They normally eat at night. But what they forced, in this study, they forced the uh, mice to eat during the day. And because of that, they gained weight even if they consumed the same amount of food. In other words, even the same amount of food they ate at night, if they ate it during the day, they gained weight. If they ate the same amount of food at night, when they normally ate, they didn't gain weight. Other studies show that if mice are fed within a time-restricted frame, they don't gain weight even if they consume extra calories from fat. Again, here we go with that time restriction. In other words, if you can keep you eating, let's say, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. or something like that, don't have any food after that, uh, that tends to because of stabilization of weight and tends to reduce the, uh, the risk of, of uh, gaining body fat. Mice uh, under time-restricted feeding consume equivalent calories from a high-fat diet as those who uh, eat as much as they want, yet are protected against obesity, uh, elevated insulin levels, fat, uh, fat formation in the liver or fatty liver, and inflammation, and they have improved motor coordination. 
The time-restricted uh, regime improved several indices of health, such as lowering mTOR. I don't, I don't want to get into too much technical stuff. And raising AMPK. Let's just say that it promoted fat uh, uh, oxidation, make, to make it simple. However, not all studies in humans support this notion. In fact, studies in humans indicate that it's not necessarily the time you eat, but how much you eat that matters. In other words, it makes no difference if you eat at night, as long as the calories, your calorie intake for the entire day, including at night, doesn't exceed your calor caloric expenditure. It makes no difference, because like I say, your, your metabolism is the same. Don't believe that malarkey that your resting metabolism is lower at night. It's nonsense. A study of over 1,600 children found no link between eating dinner past 8 p.m. and excess weight. In this study, late eaters did not appear to consume more total calories. Thus, eating at night may lead to weight gain only if you eat excess calories. You won't gain weight by merely eating later if you eat within your daily caloric needs. Some still studies show that nighttime eaters typically make poorer food choices and do eat more calories. That can lead to weight gain. In other words, if you eat late at night and you, and you eat a lot of junk foods, refined foods, you know, you eat like half a pizza, something like that, sure, you're going to gain weight because you're eating excess calories. But it's not the time that you're eating. It's what you're eating that's most important. If you're hungry after dinner, choose nutrient-dense foods and low-calorie be beverages, you know, concentrated proteins and fat, rather than refined foods and processed foods. You may also want to consider eating a higher calorie breakfast or frequent small meals throughout the day to manage appetite and stave off late night hunger. In other words, if you have a nice distribution of calories, you know, take in a pretty good amount of calories at breakfast and, and you know, space your meals like every five hours or so. Don't go too long between meals. The odds of being ravenously hungry at night go down precipitously. You probably will not overeat at night and the problem of gaining weight from late night eating disappears. So that's about it. So, um, you know, the take home message here is that the notion that, yeah, that there's something special about eating late at night that'll either make you fat or blunt fat gains is not really true, but it does depend on what you eat. In other words, if you eat a lot of junk, and if you know, if you eat stuff like, let's say, that doesn't have fiber, where you can wind up overeating a lot of calories, yes. It will blunt fat gains, and it will probably add to uh, body fat, especially if you're uh, exceeding your caloric expenditure. In other words, if you're taking in more calories than you burn. So that's about it for late night eating. If you want more information on nutrition, supplements, ergogenic aids, fat loss techniques that do work, uh, women's health, hormonal therapy, exercise science, Subscribe today to my to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. I have some fantastic articles coming up, information that you won't find anywhere on the web or, in, or certainly on, in, uh, on uh, websites or blogs. You won't find any of this stuff. Uh, one example is uh, I'm going to have an article on, on skin aging. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list some, some very little known techniques to minimize the aging of human skin. So, you know, those of you over 40, men and women who are watching this, this should be a fantastic interest to you because you can make yourself look, you know, just by following certain nutritional principles and other uh, factors, you could make yourself look a lot younger without having to resort to stuff like plastic surgery and that kind of stuff. I'm going to have a, a whole, just a, a, a amazing amount of information coming up in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. And I don't care what your level of edu education I don't care if you have PhDs, MDs, whatever. You will learn something in every issue of my Applied Metabolics newsletter. I, I absolutely guarantee that. Uh, uh, and if you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to uh, join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health and medicine, preventative medicine, that kind of thing. Uh, also, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site where subscribers, current subscribers, can send me brief questions. Uh, uh, I will answer them at no extra charge. That is, uh, that is only for subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited emails. Uh, again, you're welcome to leave comments under this video, good or bad. 
I'll just ignore the bad ones. It's okay. You know, it's a it's a free country, freedom of speech. You know, you, you know, you could call me names if you want, like some of the trolls do. Again, doesn't bother me. You know, I mean, I, I don't take it personal when somebody hiding behind a screen name, you know, calls me a, a old man or, or old guy or looks like he never touched a weight. You know, it's, it doesn't bother me because they don't have the guts to say it to my face. You know, I don't care. It's meaningless to me. So I prefer that you don't leave comments like that. I like to have nice comments. But like I say, whatever you want. But my point here is that I don't usually uh, respond to a lot of the comments. In other words, I, uh, questions submitted to me in the comment section. It all depends on my mood. Sometimes I'll answer them. Most of the time I don't. It's not. I just don't have the time. Uh, uh, so, you know, if you really want to get a question answered, the best way to do that is to subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's uh, 30, it's, it comes out to 33 cents a day. The average cost of a daily newspaper, for example, here in Los Angeles, is $2.75, which makes my newsletter eight times less expensive. Uh, and it's worth it. I, I, it's 40 to 50 pages every month. No ads, just pure evidence-based information. You will learn. You will benefit. For you personal trainers out there, you could look at my Applied Metabolics newsletter as a continuing education source because it will give you all the latest information about training techniques and diet techniques that you can use to your client's benefit. So it's worth it for you, for you to definitely to subscribe, but it's worth it for anyone to subscribe. Anyone who wants to stay healthy and stay in shape, this is the way to go. I have 57 years of experience, unmatched by anybody who's doing any similar publication. So that's it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Dogs do not keep you awake at night, although my dog, Bruno, prefers to sleep in the bed. And uh, unfortunately, he does wake me up. But you know what? His company is worth it. His, uh, it's, worth it. it's worth it. I don't care if he wakes me up. So go to your local shelter and adopt a dog or a cat.